Hi, in the last class we discussed about types of transmission line and their applications. In today's class we will discuss about the parameters of the transmission line. In this class we will discuss about parameters of transmission line. Parameters of transmission line. These parameters are classified as primary parameters and secondary parameters. Coming to the primary parameters, these are also known as the line primary parameters. The parameters are nothing but R, L, C and G. R is resistance, L is inductance, C is capacitance, G is conductance. G is conductance. Let us consider a transmission line of length L of length L. If you divide this one into equal parts, each and every part is consisting of these R, L, C, G and they are uniformly distributed. They are uniformly distributed. That's why this transmission line is an example for distribu distributed network. We have lumped elements and distributed elements. In distribu distributed elements, distributed elements means it is same at each and every point or else it is same for the given length. Here let us take total length x equal to L. Let us take this length as dx. This one is dx. This one is dx. This one is also dx. This one is also dx. That means it is divided into 5 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each and every part is consisting of these R, L, C, G and they are uniformly distributed. That's why transmission line is an example for the distributed network. So here if you see this part, let us consider this part or this part. Each and every part is consisting of R, L and C, G. So here I consider this part means one of the part of the transmission line here dx. Here we consider five parts out of that five parts. Let us take any part. Each part is consisting of these elements R, L, C, G. Now we will see how we have this R, L, C, G in case of the transmission line. Actually, what is the purpose of the transmission line? This transmission line is used to connect source and load to send the information from the source to the load. So here load is having a load impedance of ZL and here we have a source. In order to connect the source and load, we are using this transmission line. This one is our transmission line. This transmission line is connecting the source and the load. Here source is having an impedance of ZS. This transmission line is used to connect source and the load in order to transmit the information from source to load. So let us take here we have a voltage Vs and at the load end we have a voltage Vl. When you apply voltage there is a flow of current through this one that is let us assume current through this one is the transmission line is I and here we have a current of Is. Here we have a current of IL. Let us take this current that means when you apply voltage there is a flow of current. Due to the voltage there is a flow of current. When you have flow of current through this transmission line, here this transmission line is consisting of the two conductors separated by the a dielectric medium. Separated by a dielectric medium. These two are conductors. We know that when you have when you apply voltage, there is a flow of current. Due to this flow of current, there is a drop across this conductor. There is a drop across the conductor. The drop can be represented as that means voltage drop in this case equal to what I into R that means in order to represent drop across this conductor we require a property called as what a resistance that means this resistance occurred for this conductor that means it is the resistance on the line resistance on the line one parameter is over next coming to the L when you apply voltage what I said there is a flow of current that means here this conductor act as what current carrying conductor this current carrying conductor produces magnetic field current carrying conductor produces magnetic field due to that magnetic field there exists what magnetic energy in order to store that magnetic energy we need inductor 
Inductor has a property called as what? Inductance. That means in order to store the magnetic energy, we require this inductance. Once again, I am explaining, when you applied voltage, there is a flow of current through this conductor. Then this conductor can be acted as what? Current carrying conductor. This current carrying conductor produces magnetic field. Due to that magnetic field, there exists magnetic energy. To store that magnetic energy, we need this inductance property. That means, this R and L existed on the line. On the line. Next, coming to the C and G. Here, we have what? Inductor. Transmission line is consisting of two conductors separated by a dielectric medium. That means, it is just like what? Two plates, two parallel plates separated by a dielectric medium. These two plates are conductors. Here also two conductors separated by dielectric medium. That means there exists what a property called as what capacitance. Okay. Or else here there exists what voltage. Due to that voltage there exists what a electric field per unit electric field. That means voltage per unit distance. That is nothing but electric field intensity. As there exists electric field intensity there exists what electric energy. To store that electric energy, we require this property called as what? Capacitance. That capacitance is existed between the conductors of the line. That means it is existed between the conductors of the line or else it is existed in between these two conductors. It can be taken as what? Parallel element. These two can be taken as what? Series elements. So that's why third property is nothing but what? C. Next coming to the fourth one that is G. That is G. What I said, here we have conductors, two conductors separated by dielectric medium. These two conductors may not perfect. These two conductors may not perfect. And the dielectric is also may not perfect. As conductor is not perfect, there exists a resistance. If it is perfect, the resistance value is zero. Similarly, this dielectric is also not perfect. As dielectric is not perfect, there exists some leakage current. That leakage current is flowing through the this conductance. That means leakage current is through the dielectric medium. This dielectric medium is between the conductors. So that's why this conductance is existed between the conductors. We have this property in between the conductors. So that's why the G is also taken as what are parallel elements. So that's why these two are R and L are series elements. C and G are parallel elements. These are the these are the parameters of the transmission line or elements of the transmission line and they are uniformly distributed throughout the length of the line. That means if you take a transmission line of length 5 meters, if it is divided into equal parts, each one is consisting of 1 meter, each and every part is consisting of this R, L, C, G and they are C. So that's why transmission line is an example for distributed network. Therefore, these are always defined with respect to that, with respect to per unit length or else per unit distance. So we can define R as what? Series resistance as it is series element. Series resistance per unit length. Series resistance per unit length. Units are what? Ohms per meter. Similarly, L is what? It is on the line. So, it is a series element. That's why it is also defined as what? Series inductance. Series inductance per unit length. Units are what? Henry per meter. C is. If you see C, C is what? Parallel element. G is also parallel element. That's why these two are defined as what? C is nothing but what? Parallel capacitance per unit length. Parallel capacitance per unit length. We know the units of capacitance that is farad. As it is capacitance per unit length farad per meter. And G it is also parallel conductance. Parallel conductance per unit length. Parallel conductance per unit length. And what about the units? So units are mo per meter. Resistance units are ohms per meter. Conductance units are mo per meter. This is all about the parameters of the transmission line. In next class, we will discuss about voltage and current equations of the transmission line.